Welcome back to the record player, everybody. Scott with you. Um, for some of us music fans who were lucky enough to say that we were there at the beginning of uh, much music, uh, we really can say that there was absolutely um, nothing like it up to that point, and there never has been anything like it since. Uh, it was new, it was fresh, it was innovative. Um, it put the music fan practically in the same room as their favorite artists. Uh, and it made the household names of the VJs who hosted it all for us every day. Uh, and today I'm happy to have one of those with us to talk about the new mu Much Music documentary called 299 Queen Street West and the upcoming tour through Canada to showcase the movie. Uh, he's been a morning man on the Toronto radio market. He was the original host of Entertainment Tonight Canada and he was one of the longest running, uh, the longest tenured Much Music uh, personalities where he got his start. Mr. Rick Campanelli is with us. Wow. Scott, I, I learned so much from that intro of yours. Thank you so much for having me. But I don't know. Was I the was Master T the longest? Was, was I said one Steve of them. Yeah, one. Okay. One of <laughs> I, <got you. laughs> I didn't sit. Hey, listen, the I wish I could. I wish I could have been the longest. But when you start having babies of your own, you're out of there. So. But if you look at all the personalities that were around much music for that, for that, you were there for quite some time. Right. So you, you I didn't want to leave. I no. didn't want to leave that beautiful place, magical place. I loved music so much. And that's one of the reasons why I signed up in the first place. It was a place where fans of music could really shine. You know, like I, I watched much music religiously as a kid growing up. And, <laughs> and I still pinch myself to even think I spent 11 years in that environment. It's a, uh, I, I I don't know how it happened. I, I, it went by like that, to tell you the truth, too, you know. But I, but I never took a day for granted. You know, every day was different. We had bands coming in. They, it felt like every day of the week. And we were doing some pretty fun stuff out on the street of Queen and John. And, uh, and the best part about it was getting to meet fellow music fans that came by every day. And that's what made that place. The, the, the people that loved music. Um, and that's why that place was so successful. And you talked about it yourself. You, you, it wasn't just the fans. It was the, the, you guys, the people that worked there, not just the VJs, the people behind the scenes, the, the producers. Oh the, yeah. The ownership. We, we all love music. We all love music and we are all so passionate about music and, 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 and getting the best out of the musicians and the artists that came to visit us and getting them that, yeah, getting them one step closer to their fans and bringing the fans closer to their heroes, like you said earlier, that was the beauty of that place. And I don't think any other place in the world was doing it the way Much Music was doing it. And I was just so honored to be part of it. Um, I want to talk, we're, we're going to talk about the movie, obviously, that's what we're here to promote, yeah. which uh, is um, going to be touring all across the country, yeah. Um, yeah. starting with next week in uh, Toronto on the 22nd yeah. of September. Um, but let's talk, I want to talk a little bit about, well, first of all, what have you been up to? I mean, you, you're not getting up at some ungodly hour like you were for the past. Not year. anymore. Not I don't anymore. understand how the hell morning guys do that and still function. Mm -hmm. I would lose my mind. But <laughs> what Scott, <are> you... <laughs> I, I gave it a shot. Um, I've done morning radio now a few times. <laughs> and, and every time I think, okay, this time I got it. I'm <laughs> older. I got this. I don't need to stay up until 1 a.m. anymore watching late night. I've been there, done that. <laughs> so I did the edge. I did the edge for seven months, and that was a that was a dream gig. But I was also doing ET Canada at the same time. Now I don't know how Roz Weston does it. He does the, the morning radio show. He does the ET Canada still. Well, now he gave up ET, but he's been doing it for fifteen years. I did it for seven months, and I couldn't do it anymore. So when Z one zero three five came along, I thought, okay, I'm not at ET anymore. I don't have a full time day gig. I got this right. Well. I lasted 13 months and I was pretty proud of myself for beating my edge gig at seven months. But man, getting up at 3.30 and going to bed at 7 p.m. at night, not it's not for a lot of people. And and, and I obviously couldn't uh, sustain it. Um, and unfortunately, I had, to, I had to say goodbye. I loved that gig. It was a fun gig because it brought me back to my roots uh, at Much Music. It was music. It was live. I had a co-host. We had a lot of fun. And it was the closest thing to much music that I've been around in years because there'll never be another much music. Let's just face it. And I think you added that earlier into your intro, but uh, I just, I just couldn't do morning radio anymore. Maybe try me again in a few years. <laughs> I, don't know. But I, was, I felt like a zombie coming home after work. I would be lying, lying on the couch, falling asleep on the couch. 
into bed early, wasn't spending all that quality time that I love to spend with my young family. So yeah, I had to say goodbye, unfortunately, back in January. Yeah. How do you, I mean, I always wondered how the hell do you guys go to bed after the first period? I mean, I couldn't do that. I'd lose my mind. I know. I know. <laughs> What's the result of the game? I want to stay yeah. up to watch the end of the game. And, I, and I'm and i a big sports guy, man, Scott. If you know me, I love my sports. Yep. And I couldn't watch the Leafs. I couldn't watch the Raptors. I couldn't watch the Jays. I couldn't watch TFC. I couldn't watch all my favorite teams. Mm. I would have to wake up the next morning at 3.30 in the morning and find out the results. Uh, yeah, it was tough, man. It was tough. Uh, I'm 53 years old and I, I can't go to bed until after I at least watch the late sports night. Uh, <laughs> let, let's go. Let's talk a bit about your introduction to much. When you got to much, yeah. I mean, you're at home. You're, you're, you mentioned yourself. You're a kid watching much music at home on TV all the time with the original crew. Um, you get yourself yeah. onto much music as, as a, in a, in a contest, really. Tell us a little bit about just yeah. who started with much and then we'll go on. We'll talk a little bit about them. Yeah, I, I watched much religiously as uh, all young Canadians did back in the day. I, I, I remember the moment it launched in 84. I was 14. Uh, I was just about to go into high school and and I loved music. Music was my life. I lived and breathed music back in the day. I My thumb was on the pulse. I knew everything. I was so knowledgeable and I, and I wanted to learn more. And 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 um, so watching these VJs do their thing and watching them introduce these new music videos, I was, I was, I was theirs. They had me. I, it was like I was under their spell, uh, with what Steve was doing and Erica and Master T and Bill and and the whole list of them. Even back before those, when Michael Williams and Shady Roberts and Christopher Ward were doing their thing with Laurie Brown. So, I I I loved that station. I loved what they were about, not just music videos, but the VJs being these larger than life personalities really entertaining us. If yeah. you remember back in the day and they really did. So they were my inspiration. Um, and then this contest came along, you know, called the temp contest. And I think it was introduced in 1993. I was in university at the time I entered it that year, but I just sent my entry in and on this like piece of paper, I faxed it in and there's no way I was going to win that contest. And I didn't. <laughs> the next year, I thought, I'm serious about this contest. And I'm serious about this dream of, you know, working at Much Music and maybe one day becoming a VJ like Steve and Erica and, and Michael. And so so I, I really put my, myself in this state of I'm going to focus on this entry. And we were only given 25 words back then in 1994 to explain why we think we would be the perfect temp for that summer. And uh, I remember locking myself in my parents' basement. I was, I was supposed to be studying for my final exams at university, but I put those on hold for this oh, other project. That priorities. was more, more what's that? Priorities, Rick. <laughs> yeah, priorities, of course. <laughs> yeah. I ended up failing one of those courses at university, but that's a side note. Um, so <laughs> for two weeks, I dedicated myself to working on this entry for this much music temp contest and you know long story short you know the day that they were announcing who the winner was of the 1994 temp contest well i see erica m with my m-shaped box entry and she's sitting behind it saying i guess you're wondering who the temp for this year is well you know we're about to announce it and it might have something to do with this entry that i'm in front and then they go to a commercial break and then that whole time they're trying to call me um, because they want to get me on air with them live to tell me that I'd won the TEM contest for 1994. But my dad was working night shifts um, and he unplugged the phone out of the jack because he was sleeping upstairs mm -hmm. and he didn't want anyone to bother him. <laughs> and that's the way it was with my dad. So they're trying to call me this whole time. We can't get a hold of this. And I finally realized, oh, the phone was out of the jack. You know, I knew that I was the winner because I saw Erica with my entry. So, uh, you know, to make a long story even shorter, I, I was introduced to this magical world of much music on July 1st, 1994. And that was my opportunity. And I saw it, I ran with it, and uh, I haven't looked back ever since. You know, I didn't, you know, I only spent 11 years at much music and, and, it, and I look back at it now and it's like the blink of an eye is how fast it went by, but we had some great moments and I never took, a day I never took a shift 
for granted. I loved that job. I loved being that person uh, because I was, still am, a huge music fan. And uh, it, it, it just felt like the, a, a perfect fit. And um, it lasted it lasted quite a bit. Yeah, quite, yeah. quite a long time. When I didn't want to leave. I was sad to leave, but all good things must come to an end. When you got there in 94, did was there any of the original, I mean, not, I don't think any of the original DJs were still there, but was there any of the original crew still around? Like, Walichka was well, still there. Like behind the scenes crew were all there since day well most of them were there since day one uh and then the on airs well erica wasn't one of the originals but she came soon after steve came soon after Lichick came soon after. but yeah you know, christopher was already gone christopher war jd roberts was already gone uh uh who else and michael williams was was long gone as well and that's you know and that's what's so amazing about this documentary because doing the press leading up to the re release of the, the Canadian premiere I've been hanging out with all my my idols like my heroes like with Steve with Erica and Michael I've been spending so much time with them and these are people that I grew up idolizing I want to be like them and now I'm getting to do interviews with them it's like it's been a continuous pinch me moment for me since 1994 to, to today like it's it's crazy but uh i'm loving the ride um there's been features uh features and 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 you know articles and all that type of stuff about much music over the years but nothing quite like this nothing quite like this documentary that that uh um uh, sean it's sean menard Menard, yeah. Menard, yeah. Um, he he put this together. Uh, when did you find out that this was in the works? I mean, when did you and I guess all of you guys sort of get told, "Hey, we're, we're I'm working on this, and I want you to be a part of it." Yeah, I I think I well I was at Z one zero three five and doing morning radio, and uh, Erica reaches out to me saying uh, her friend Sean Menard, uh, who was the filmmaker uh, of the Carter Effect, the Vince Carter documentary that premiered at TIFF a few years back. And she says, um, we got a great director. He wants to tell the story of much music. Would you like to be involved? And I remember right away saying, just the way when Denise Donlin asked me if I wanted to be a VJ, I thought about it for a three seconds. And I said, <laughs> yes, what can I do to be involved? I wanna be that guy, I wanna help out. Um, so yeah, it was an honor to be approached by Sean. I remember sitting in his home and chatting for hours about my stories because he he approached several vjs to get their own perspective uh on how much music was for them in that era that they spent there so i believe I, you know i'm in it and steve's in it and erica and, and george is part of it and and michael williams and bill and sukin lee and namagani monica diol is part of it mike campbell who did going coastal uh, um, i hope i'm not forgetting anybody but there were so you're, many you're, persons. Even you're bringing up, Rick, stuff that I forgot all about. You brought up the Mike Campbell. I was like, Mike and Mike's excellent cross Canada. Yeah, yeah. Mike. <laughs> right? You remember <laughs> that, right, Scott? That was such a fun show, too. And um, the VJs just, just made it fun. Like, they, they, they created fun, entertaining television. And then the icing on the cake was, well, this is a music channel. So it's all all about music that, that's so cool and you're so paid. so yeah when sean put <laughs> me i said let's do it when do you want to do the interview and then everything after that he says well can you do this can you do that like let's go down to office to premiere it to the world at south by southwest yeah sign me up i want to be a part of it because it had such an impact on my life much music those 11 years you know uh, a year and a half behind the scenes nine and a half in front of the camera as a vj those were those were such important years of my life. You know, I was a, I was a young guy, um, just coming out of university. It was my full time gig, and um, and I cherished I cherished those moments. I cherished those years, and and I would have done anything. Sean asked uh, as the film director, I would have done anything he wanted to promote the movie, to 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 add my two cents uh, uh, when it came my time to tell my story. Uh, yeah, and I was honored that he approached me. Because there was, there's been a lot of VJs, right? Like there's been, gosh, since the beginning, close to fifty. You yeah, know, but I don't, I don't think I most think... of most of uh, people of a certain vintage, especially the ones that grew up at the beginning of much music, I don't think they even. And it may be unfair to say, but I'm not sure they even count the VJs past a certain 
<laughs> yeah, yeah I, you're right I, I, yeah it, like i remember all of them because i was that much into my music i was there i was part of it daily um so but you're right there's been a lot that just spent a year or less than a year but um obviously they didn't really want to be there maybe they had other goals in mind my goal when i entered there in in the summer of 94 was well, now that I'm here, I got my foot in the door. I want to make it last. I want to be here for a long time because this is my life. Music was my life. And uh, and I wanted to make that happen for myself. So, yeah, maybe, maybe I talked them in to, to spending the last few years there. Maybe maybe I was past my prime and, and I was getting to be, you know, <laughs> in my mid thirties at the time and mm -hmm. you know mid thirties starting to have a starting to have a family like what DJ has has a baby has kids you know they <laughs> hire kids you know in the latter years to be VJ. So so I knew it was my time to, to say goodbye. And it was that was the toughest day. That was the really hard day for me to leave this job. My only job that I had since uh leaving university and it was such a special one too. It was it was hard to leave part of me didn't want to leave but part of me knew it was time to go because it, it was changing and um I, I could tell what was changing about it new people were in charge it, it wasn't the same place that I'd signed up for all those years later and that's what happens in business and well you know change happens and and instead of playing music videos 24 7 well now we're we're airing reality tv pop culture shows and it was it was totally changing with the times and and I was more about the music and, and less about the reality shows but uh that's what people were were asking for and wanted in the in the mid aughts I guess you could say when I left and um we we've always said that there's nothing there was nothing like the much environment there was nothing it no. could never be duplicated again for lots of different reasons right. safety reasons political correctness all that stuff all um, that no, nobody would ever be able to do this kind of thing again what are some of the mm -hmm. memories that you have that make you think we couldn't do this now like that this would never fly i mean do you remember anything for me i remember erica interviewing uh, red hot chili peppers and some of the stuff that they were saying to her they get they get roasted for now <laughs> oh yeah oh, she yeah. handled it very very well oh she, yeah she did she right? she was very very professional about those interviews and we've talked in length about she despised the chili peppers and i they're one of my favorite interviews of all time <laughs> different strokes for different folks i guess but i remember back in the day and even before my time and i was just recently talking to, to about somebody when when they had the canadian music video awards which turned into the much music video awards we brought people in to the environment slash studio where the artists were performing, where the artists were receiving their awards. We were bringing people in from off the street to be part of that party. And you can't do that. You could never do that these days. And as that, as that show became a bigger ticket, uh, as the years went by, well, more international artists wanted to be a part of it. David Bowie, Destiny's Child, Britney Spears, Foo Fighters, Smashing Pumpkins. You know, you can't just bring anybody off the street and your feet away from some of the biggest acts in the world, you know, um, but we got away with that back then. And I don't know, it didn't, it didn't even seem like we had a lot of security. No, <laughs> those didn't. days. No, because, <laughs> but you're right, that could never happen these days. Like, you know, because you don't know what would happen. I guess back in the day, we 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 put our faith in everyone everyone that we brought into the environment we knew you were a music fan and you're here for the music well how you're not going to disrupt you're not going to cause any problems and 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 there were very few problems that i remember if any um but as the years go by and everyone wants to everyone wants to go viral with a moment you know i want to do this crazy stunt or that crazy stunt well you just can't have just anybody in an environment or J and Kanye and Reed on one day. You just, you're right. Th these things will never, never be seen again. And uh, I, I'm so grateful to live in those times and be part of it. I, I'm yeah, very we, magical. I'm grateful we have YouTube to go back and, and relive some of this stuff. Yeah. Um, what, and, this thing, and the things you see on YouTube, Scott, are the best because yeah. there's everyone's engaged. Every, everyone that was in the environment was engaged because there's no cell phones. Yeah. All eyes are on the artists, Green Day, Blind Melon, Neil Young, whoever was there, 
there's no cell phones, there's no texting, there's no this. Everyone was engaged and in that moment. And that was the beauty of it all too. It really was having the people come in off the street and be part of that special minutes or however long it lasted. I remember uh, Ed, when I when I spoke to Ed the Sock, he told me uh, his show, there was a few <laughs> things because it was nighttime. So he said there was a few things where the-, the Oh yeah, he, well, he was after hours. He, yeah, he, he got into a lot of trouble. <laughs> the kooks came out at night when they would pull people off the street into the <laughs> That's right. um and I remember Angela oh, Dorman. They, they sure did. Do you remember Angela Dorman? I remember Angela yeah. Angela Dorman. Angela Dorman, I remember, yeah. I remember her doing a Christmas thing where she was decorating the tree. And I like some of the stuff she was saying, I was like, she's gotta get in trouble for this. She has to get in trouble. And but back then you didn't, right? It was just the weirdest thing. They loved, they encouraged when we went when we thought outside of the box, when we came to them with these crazy ideas. And these days, most people would say, well, no, we can, you know, you can't, can't get away with that legality problems, issues here. That Let's do it, man. This much music. It's, it's sex, drugs and rock and roll back in the day. And we wanted to be as wild as we could and as, uh, as entertaining as we could. Um, but Angela Dorman, another great DJ that didn't spend a lot of time at much. She went on to do more acting and, and then I see her on Seinfeld, on an episode of Seinfeld. Mm -hmm. It's it was just so amazing what what the how, what the how the paths of these VJs and and where it led them. So yeah, I remember Angela. Wow, that's that's uh, many years ago. Oh yeah, that went back, but that always stuck in my mind because she was yeah. decorating the tree, and doing she something making, to the Christmas tree. Yeah, she kept making comments about balls, and I was <laughs> and I, that always stuck in my head. Uh, as and then owner. Steve Anthony goes, go, turns around and, and takes that tree and throws it off, the, it off. with Mike cleaner. the Cleaner. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I want just quickly. I want to. You mentioned it a little bit on you mentioning that Chili Peppers was one of your favorite uh, um, interviews. I'm sure you've been asked this a million times. What was your favorite interview? What was the thing that that you loved the most? That you were going into work that day, going, I get to talk to this person. Well, you know what, Scott? It happened to me almost on a daily basis. I, like I said, I was a huge music fan. I just loved interviewing the bands and asking them the questions and asking them different questions, the questions that were going to, you know, create entertaining answers. <laughs> um, but yeah, I, I would say the Chili Peppers, because the, the Chili Peppers had come into much music so many times, uh, but not all four as a collective. You know, you'd see Flea coming in with Anthony, you'd see Chad or John and and Anthony come in together. But when all four members came in back in 2002 to promote By The Way, I got assigned that gig to, to be the host. And they're one of my favorite bands of all time. We had a great chat. It was an hour long. We had the people in there, the fans of the Chili Peppers. It was just a big love. And it gave me a lot of warm fuzzy. So definitely that is up there on my list of, of favorite interviews. But I do have to admit too, when I was when I was pigeonholed and put into that sector of the boy band craze, <laughs> <laughs> talking to Insync and the Backstreet Boys and 98 Degrees and all the other boy bands and even the guys and the new kids on the block when they came back to release their their solo albums because I, I was a little after the new kids on the block um, uh, hysteria. Uh, that was more Steve and Erica and Michael Williams. <laughs> But uh, but but I I loved talking to those boy bands. They they were they were a lot of fun, and we had a lot of fun together. And they were making a lot of people happy around the world uh, <laughs> by making their music. So yeah, there's a there's a long list of favorite interviews, but uh, those are just a few. Conversely, and I don't you don't need to dish any any crap. But uh, what was the what what did you, who did you just <laughs> did you have any that you just walked away from and said I. You know, <laughs> you know what to tell you the truth I, I i can't remember walking away from anything saying i i i, I want to do that over again like we we knew what we were in for we researched we prepared we tried to have as much fun as we could with any artist in any genre um no i i had so much fun with everyone and everyone <laughs> knew what they were there for to promote an album to introduce their music video, to promote their concert tour. Like they, these people are good. Maybe 99% were good when that 1% could have had a little media training, <laughs> but um, 
but I, yeah, no, I do remember it was my first ever interview and maybe I was really green and, and or the band was kind of indie and kind of, you know, had, had this attitude, but I, there was an indie band that Denise and the producers gave me for my first ever interview. And um, it didn't go as well as the ones that came afterwards because <laughs> it was my first time doing it. And it was, it, it was a one word answers. And, yeah. and then I totally, I'll never forget I Denise this, uh, Denise Don at the end, she said that was probably the worst interview I've ever seen in my <laughs> life on much music. <laughs> but that was creative, you know, input that I needed uh, and criticism because that, that lit a fire under my butt and that, that got me in gear and prepared me for the, the next hundreds to come. Um, we all need those bad ones to, okay. to make sure we're, we're hitting in that right direction to make them good and not bad, you know? So yeah, no, no, but I, I, I probably could, could count on my hand the number of times I said, well, I wish I had a redo on that one. I, I can't, I can't even remember. Uh, I remember calling someone the wrong name. Uh, <laughs> there, was a, there was this, there was this artist out of New York. Her name was Alana Ford, indie artist. And I think uh, I called her Alana Miles at the end. But <laughs> mistake we make. I called uh, I called Mono Whale's uh, singer Sally. I think I called her Sarah. And and afterwards I was like, oh Jesus. Uh, <laughs> yeah. I'm old. Stuff, stuff, happens. <laughs> stuff happens, man. Yeah. My theory was I'm old. Um, okay, so we're the the, <laughs> the movie the movie is going around. It's touring through yeah. Canada. Uh, we're in Toronto on um, yes. number already a week today. Yeah, yeah next week, Hall. man. It's uh, happening. Then it's going to Montreal. It's going to St. John's, Charlottetown, Halifax, Ottawa, all the way across to Edmonton, Vancouver. Um, are you guys? Are you traveling with the whole thing and going all around, or are you guys just taking shifts? Because you're doing the intimate and interactive things afterwards as well. Um, yeah, so, uh, I will be a traveling Wilbury uh, for the months of October and November. Um, you call me Roy Orbison. I will be traveling around the late great Roy Orbison. I will be traveling with the production, uh, with Sean, of course, uh, the crew. Um, I want to make all those stops and I want to see all those people that were the, the fans of Much Music. Uh, because I've said before, if it weren't for the viewers, the fans of Much Music, there would be no Much Music. The people made that station great and they made that station successful. People like you and I, who tuned in back in the eighties when it first started the music fans, the, the, the passionate diehard music lovers. So, and we used to travel the country back in the day with the much music video road party or, or the snow jobs or the sand jobs or whatever the show was. So I, I I'm excited to get back out there and see the people that, that made much music uh, and it was the viewers. So I'm going to every stop. Good. Uh, I can't wait. I can't wait to answer the questions if people have questions for me. I know a bunch of other DJs are going along as well, but uh, I want to relive all these magical moments that we created together. The way they were they were created in the first place, live with the people watching and us performing. Well, I want to be there again when when these people that come out to see the documentary relive it it's so nostalgic to see what's happened all those years ago and to and to you know and to tell the stories again and 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 then stories come from what we're seeing so I, i'm excited to get on the road and be part of the tour for sure uh i was choked up just watching the the, the trailer for it uh, so i mean i can't so because every single memory came back to me um of yeah going to well and then and then you have that classic trailer that starts with Steve Anthony's, like the, the voice, like it, it just pulls you in and, and you want that trailer on and last for two hours, but, but it does as the film, the trailer, <laughs> it does suck you in though. It pulls you right in. And uh, I get goosebumps every time watching it myself. And I've seen it hundreds of times. <laughs> well, for me, I get to see it on Friday. So, uh, the 22nd Roy Thompson hall. Uh, we will yeah. see there. Um, it is called once again, 299 Queen Street West, uh, which of course is an address that anybody of a certain uh, vintage uh, remembers um, hearing multiple times per day when you tune yeah. in. Uh, 
Uh, I can't wait to see it. Tickets can be bought at uh, 299 queenstreetwestcom uh, for all the spot, all the uh, stops in uh, throughout the country. Uh, I really appreciate yeah. you uh, chilling with us for a little bit here, Rick, and talk, mm -hmm. talking to us about the movie. It's been an absolute pleasure. Um, oh, Scott, thank you for having me on the record player. I appreciate it, man. I love talking about the good old days and uh, lots more good days to come. <laughs> well, I hope so. And uh, anybody watching this thing on Friday is going to, it's going to yeah. immediately bring back so many memories. Thanks a lot, man. I appreciate it. And good right. luck to you going awesome. forward. And Thank we'll you, Scott. I'll see you Friday. Yeah, absolutely. All right, man. Enjoy the show. Thanks. Take care.